everybody, I'm Melissa Muir. Welcome back for another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This is actually a video that I've been meaning to do for a while now. I've had a lot of different questions on this. So today I'm going to explain a little bit about stacking with the hydraulic press. What that means is just using spacers and getting your platen so that you don't have to raise it quite so far and also just making certain that things are aligned properly so that you will receive the most uh, efficient pressure and guided pressure from your press as you're using it. So let's take a look at this right now. In my studio I have three different hydraulic presses and each of them are a little bit different as far as what their opening is. What determines that opening is how tall your cylinder or your jack is. So you can have different ranges. This is uh, the largest opening that I have and it's approximately six inches from the top of the bottom platen to the top of the frame here, the frame opening. When I have this top platen in place, I have about five and a half inches. So you can have a very wide variation just depending on the type of jack you have. If you happen to have a larger pr frame press and a shorty jack, then you could have up to like eight or nine inches of an opening in here. Now, that's not to say that your jack will have that amount of stroke or the length of the ram that's in it. So what we need to do is kind of shorten that depending on what we're using. Because sometimes I'm just using a piece of urethane and maybe maybe I'm just forming this with like a small mushroom uh, steak or something like that. But in most cases, I don't need six inches of space here and if I have one of my hand powered uh, jacks then that means that I'm going to be cranking quite a bit to close this gap. So what I like to do is I stack things inside of this opening to act as spacers and there are a number of things that you can use for spacers. Um, before I knew about that what I would do is just use my steel blocks so you can use anything like that. There are others that are now available through Potter USA, also through Rio and Bonnie Dune. So you have quite a few to choose from. These are two new ones, so, well, same thing, but this is a newer one from Kevin Potter. They're just little four inch spacers. They're made out of aluminum, so they're kind of nice and lightweight. So sometimes I'll just take this in here, stack that in there like that. Maybe I have one of my contained urethanes that I purchased from Potter USA and I'll turn it upside down. And then I can place a pancake die here or one of my silhouette dies with some urethane on it. But now I only have to raise my ramp maybe about two inches. So there's a number of things that you can do. If I'm working with larger pieces, there are larger spacers available. Again, this is an aluminum one from Potter USA. I also really like these one inch thick, well actually they're a little larger than one inch thick, but these are acrylic spacers that came from Bonnie Dune. And again, this gives me a nice wide base that I can fully support a piece, say a larger, a larger um, silhouette die or even a larger pancake die. Because you want to make sure that everything is fully supported as well as centered in here. Now, if I happen to have a pancake die that is wider than this top platen here, I don't want to just use the top platen for my pressure, so I can actually stack things in between this. So I would just sandwich them. So for instance, let's say that I'm using one of my larger dies. This is probably my largest pancake die that I have that's not a bracelet one. This is a three inch circle. So I would get my piece in here place it in between, and then come and put my pressure. And this allows me to make certain that I've got a good, even broad range of pressure in here. Other things that I use as spacers, there's another set that Kevin Potter offers for his bracelet dies. And this is a six inch by one inch, and maybe like, what, three inches or so. And what I can do with this, use this with my pancake dies for my bracelets, and this way I make certain that I've got a good even pressure on these. He offered these at first in steel, so mine are actually very heavy. However, now he offers them also in aluminum. They're just as strong, but much lighter and easier to use. 
So think about different configurations that you can use. You can also use different tools. Like I said, I started off by using just one of my bench blocks. And those come in different sizes as well. But the main thing is to create some kind of a stack in here. Use all of the spacers that are possible and that's going to reduce the amount of fatigue that you have in raising and lowering that ram as well as making certain that you have supported your piece completely so that everything receives that same amount of pressure. Again, very important that you get everything centered and that way the ram pressure will concentrate on the area that you're using.